Welcome to our 2020 State of the Union. We did have this plan for March, but unfortunately we uh, had to deal with COVID and we wanted to do this <clears throat> before the fall season ended and before our tryouts begin next week. Uh, my name is Frank Cittaglia. I'm the Regional Operations Manager here at Baseball Heaven. And uh, we do hope all of you and your families are all safe at this time. We know it's been a tough year and we thank all of you for being part of the Steel Baseball family and sticking it out all season. We look forward to continuing the success of Steel Baseball moving on. Tonight, we're happy to have here with us a talented group of presenters. They're all involved with Steel Baseball here at Baseball Heaven and on the corporate level as well. So they will each present to you uh, in order of this way. In, in here today is Anthony Zataglio. He is the assistant product director, and he will be discussing our teams and tryouts that begin next week. We have Cameron Soji, who is also an assistant product director, who will be discussing grad year teams and our college pathway system for 2021 and beyond. Keith Osick, vice president of coach Devel of development. I can't even say the word. <laughs> And he will be talking about coach development and our long-term athletic development plan. Steve Jones. Steve Jones is our corporate leader of coaching. He's the vice, he is the senior vice president of the steel coaching system. Steve Jones will give a great presentation on building character and life lessons. And we also have here Nick Attardi. Nick Attardi is our uh, community program director. And he'll be talking about our camps, clinics, lessons, uh, things of that nature that take place here at Baseball Heaven and for all our steel, steel players. And their siblings, of course, as well, like, we, like I always say. The, we will then take questions. There should be a chat bar on your screen. You could type the questions during our presentation and we will answer questions for around 10 minutes or so at the end of the presentation. Okay, so we welcome all, welcome you all. We welcome our presentation pre presenters, and we'd like to start you off with a short video that was put together. We do want to thank our marketing team of Nathan Clinkingbeard and Kylie for putting this deck together and the presentation together as well. Uh, next up would be Anthony Zataglio discussing uh, tryouts and Team Steel. All right. Hey, everyone. So my name is Anthony Zataglio. Like Frank said, I'm the um, regional pro uh, assistant product director here at Baseball Heaven. And... Um, First off, I just want to say, as, as, just like he said, is thank you all for listening and uh, following all of our protocol. And, and I hope everyone's safe and, and following uh, all these guidelines that we have. And um, like I said, I just hope everyone's staying safe and, and avoiding this virus. Uh, first of all, just for our fall season, we actually had a pretty good fall season. Um, we had a few teams. Um, I believe we have over 10 championships won, um, whether it's a tournament or a league play. And... Um, you know, those things aren't too important. The, you know, we're all about winning too, but um, we have a lot of off the field accomplishments as well. Uh, college commitments and um, Cameron Storage will speak on that further, but um, it's been a great fall so far. And I, I know it's been tough for everyone and um, 
we appreciate you guys hanging in there. And, um, you know, as hopefully this all gets back to normal soon. Uh, as far as uh, just another thing, too, about our fall was we had a lot of great stories that actually I've heard. Um, a lot of them are long, so I'm not going to share them, but just a quiet overview. Um, kind of dealing with our core values, you know, teamwork, respect, integrity, and commitment about new players that came over from a prior organization. You know, um, kids that never really got the chance to um, be coached the right way and learn the right things on and off the field. And just hearing them from those parents this year was um, – just want to let you know that it means a lot and, and we all see it and um, we hope to keep hearing those things from you guys too. And that's really what we strive for here is putting the kids first and, and really just, you know, getting them better on and off the field overall. Um, so that was just, I'm just, that was a brief wrap up of the fall. I'm not going to get into every team and, and all that. Um, I just want to talk ma uh, mainly about tryouts. So just to start off first, our tryouts for, for new players. Um, and I'll get into that too. For new players will be October 19th to the uh, October 22nd. And then we will have our Team Steel tryouts for returning players on, the, on Friday the 23rd. Okay, so as far as tryouts, we created a tryout committee as well this year to uh, kind of organize things better and, and just get everything started on the right foot and, and have everything on the uh, same page. Um, we really strive for communication and honesty here and just organization overall. Um, so our committee, I'll let you know who's in it. It's, it's myself, Frank Zataglio, Nick Attardi, who you'll hear from later, Cameron Sorgi, you'll hear from him as well, uh, Keith Osick, Sal Travato, who is one of our coaches here, and Bobby Molinaro, who is also one of our coaches here. So really what this committee is going to do is, or what we have been doing, is uh, planning tryouts. We come up with um, all the forms as far as evaluation forms and uh, the waiver forms and registrations and um, get everything as organized as possible. Um, these people will be dealing with the check-ins, um, registrations if it's that day, and um, just mainly all of that, all those aspects of tryouts. Everything you could really think of that has to deal with tryouts, we've been working on. And they uh, want it to be as organized as possible and we're really striving for excellence here. Um, as far as another, we have, we established another committee as well. Um, that is the evaluation committee that is dealing with all the evaluations of our players. Uh, that committee will include Eric Brown. Um, he's a co-chair at Team Steel. Uh, he is in the Long Island Hall, Sports Hall of Fame, Suffolk County Hall of Fame. And he's coached at uh, Suffolk County Community College for over, uh, I think, 40 years. So it's a, it's a lot of time in the baseball industry. Uh, Heath Terry as well. He is also a coach here. He coaches with Coach Brown as well. Um, same thing, Suffolk All-American. Um, really great coach and uh, does well with the kids as well. Uh, Dan Jagiello, he is in the committee. He is one of our coaches here, assistant coaches. Um, he was actually uh, a professional baseball player for the Los Angeles Dodgers. I hope that's right. Um, Cameron Sorgi is in this committee as well. Uh, myself again, Keith Osick. Sean McMurray, and uh, Bobby Monero as well. And just as far as that is, we're going to be, this committee is basically going to be in charge of all of evaluations and, and um, dealing with evaluating the players on the field during the tryouts and going over them after the tryouts as well. Just like I said, so we can get everything as organized as possible and, and really all be on the same page here. And as far as, um, so as far as you see on this presentation here, um, the overall experience of tryouts, I kind of have a, um, we have everything mapped out already, what the players will be doing um, as far as drills on the field. So there's not going to be any standing around and, um, and every player is going to be informed of what they're doing. Every staff member is going to be informed of what they're doing. And um, these will actually be available um, at the tryouts at registration if someone is curious on, you know, what is going to be doing, what is going to be uh, done during this tryout. Um, just a, a little uh, brief brief uh, explanation of, of the tryouts um, we're going to do. They're going to show up, they're going to stretch and throw and, and get everything right while um, we are speaking to the parents at the registration table and uh, where we are registering. Um, they'll do uh, defensive work, box drills, square drills, um, all that stuff just to get as many reps as possible. Um, we're really focusing on getting a lot of reps this year um, rather than showing up and getting five ground balls, right? And, um, you know, and, and really just essentially going home after that. So we want to get the kids as much work as possible. They'll be hitting batting practice on the field um, 
for evaluations as far as if the weather's okay and holds up. If not, we will relocate in, in the indoor, um, socially distance, and everything will be set up in, as far as that aspect um, by our indoor staff and, and our committee as well. Um, pitching will also be done in the indoor, um, just because it will. if we do it on the fields, it will just take a long, long time. Um, and as far as I know, a lot of people have questions about the grad year tryouts. Um, so we are having a separate day for Team Steel tryout players. But if any of our Team Steel current players want to try out for a grad year team, they will have to come to the grad year tryout um, that is on uh, October 21st. And that's from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. So if you're going to try out for that grad year team, you need to show up on that day and not the day where we're having our separate Team Steel tryout. And that separate team steel tryout is on Friday, the, uh, the 23rd. And uh, that's pretty much all I have. And I'm going to pass it off to uh, Cameron Sorge. Oh, I'm sorry. And, and um, how will you be contacted, right, in the, with the results? So really this year, we're going to try and do everything in a timely manner. We're not going to, um, you know, have days go by where you won't hear anything or, or anything like that. We're going to really get these results out quick um, and, you know, and efficiently to you guys via email. and. Um, and uh, oh, wait a sec, sorry. and all those results will hopefully go out the day after, or, or I would say the day, uh, the second day after that. So we really want to get these results out quick. All right, I thank everyone for your time, and I'm going to pass it off to Cameron Sorgi now. Hey guys, uh, thank you for Frank and Anthony. Um, my name is Cameron Sorgi. I am uh, work with Anthony. I am also an assistant product director here at Steel. Um, a little background about myself. Um, I'm a former Division I baseball player uh, at University of Albany. Um, I am a former Division II coach at Adelphi University. Um, and for here, I've been coaching here for about six years now, a little bit over. And now I primarily deal with our scout teams, uh, in particular our 22 and our 23 grad years. Um, and in addition to that, uh, I work hand in hand with each athlete through the recruitment process. Um, through our college pathway progress, uh, process. And, you know, we've had a pretty successful run so far um, this year uh, through, through, through the pandemic and all the craziness that that brought. Um, we were able to send a bunch of athletes on to college, which is, uh, which is awesome for us to see. Um, so just a brief overview of our structure for our grad year teams. They will be two. There will be a scout team and an American team. Uh, these teams have a travel college coach, uh, you know, kind of exposure based schedule where um, it's our goal that, you know, we're going to train with these athletes hand in hand um, with our staff here at Steel uh, throughout the winter. And we're going to prepare these athletes um, to go out there and, and compete in front of college coaches. A uh, big goal for us is uh, when we make our schedule um, for these teams, we, you know, I would say about 90% of our games are, are going to be played in front of college coaches. Um, so it's big for us to make sure that the commitment is there from both the player um, and the family uh, for this process, because it is um, it is obviously a bump up um, from playing on, um, you know, a normal one of our steel teams. Um, and, you know, we're, we're proud of it and we like to represent ourselves well um, on the field in front of these coaches. So a little bit about the circuit. Uh, we primarily will deal with perfect game events. We will do the, the kind of the national circuit where we're going to go to Alabama, Georgia, and Florida. Um, Alabama is where the national elite will be. Uh, Georgia is where the WBA championships will be. And then Florida um, will be primarily a fall event where you're doing your freshman, sophomore, or uh, upper class events there. Um, in addition to that, uh, these we will also do the domination events where it's Super 17 um, and the college elite. Again, all the, all the events that are mentioned are college focused events where um, there's going to be a bunch of coaches at these, at these events, and it, it's good for our athletes to get in front of them, uh, but we want to make sure that they're ready. Um, in our first year, actually, with uh, kind of doing this with our 21 group, uh, we saw a big, a, a, honestly, a big success. Uh, we were, at the end of the year, we were ranked fifth in the region. Um, that's the entire Northeast region, and we were ranked 69th nationally. Um, and that was just year one with going through the pandemic and, um, you know, all the obstacles we had to hurdle. And we got through it and uh, the, the guys showed well. Um, on to the next slide, which will be the uh, recruitment process. Um, from start to finish, our staff, myself primarily, 
Um, we'll be working hand in hand with each athlete, uh, making sure that they have you know their stuff in order. Uh, academics is obviously a huge part of it, so we work hand in hand to make sure that each each, each athlete um, knows what they need to you know have in his classroom um, in order to get to the schools they want. Um, we, we we set goals uh, collectively with our athletes, and we you know do everything in our power to make sure that they get what they want out of this college pathway prog uh, process. Uh, just a you know brief example of uh, what we do with the college pathway and. Um, you know, why we're pretty respected. Uh, just in the last week, we were on, uh, myself and uh, a couple of other, uh, a couple of our other coaches uh, were on the phone with LSU, Stetson, and UCF. Um, those are all, you know, top 25 schools in the country. And uh, through our, you know, process, our players, we feel that they're ready for that and we will make the call. Um, so, you know, it's kind of a, if you're ready, we'll, we'll make that call for you. So no matter how, uh, you know, big the schools you want to go to, um, we'll be willing to make that jump as, as long as you're ready to make that commitment um, to be to do this this system with us. Um, and uh, actually, it's kind of a cool thing. Uh, I can't announce the name, um, but we've had a bunch of commitments in the in you know in the recent months, and we actually had a commitment today. Um, we had a a player who's been in our organization since he was 11 years old. Uh, made his commitment today. Um, that will be released soon on our social medias. So have a you know have a look at those. Check it out. Um, that uh, that's what we do this for, and me in particular. Um, and now, uh, yeah, I think that's about it for me. I want to thank you guys, and I'm going to pass it off to our mm -hmm. coach developer, everybody's uh, everybody's favorite coach, Co Coach Keith Osick. Just wanted to welcome the parents here to the State of the Union. Mm -hmm. Can't tell this is our first time doing it, huh? So um, thanks for taking the time during your busy schedule. Um, if I set the stage for why we wanted to have a State of the Union is um, almost like a, you know, a parent night and uh, to discuss and, and to explain to you what uh, these coaches and we've put into making this an elite organization uh, from top to bottom. Um, I really believe that starts with our coaches and, and the coaches that we have in place right now. We have a tremendous amount of uh, experience uh, here, as Anthony mentioned. Uh, we have college coaches here. We have young rising star coaches uh, that I've observed over the winter time. And um, we really wanted to brag about, you know, what we're doing behind the scenes as far as our coaching curriculum. Um, the coaches are, are supposed to uh, have 15 CEUs. Uh, that we have, uh, we have uh, um, a catalog that the uh, coaches um, will go online and do, uh, do credits, um, and they just do a tremendous jo job here. Uh, as far as our uh, practice plans, um, our practice plans have been uh, written out and um, they are based on the USA long-term athletic development plan. So your child would fall into the five stages um, and, and that is age appropriate. Uh, that starts with the entry level um, to seven years old discover from seven to 12 years old. Uh, progress stage is 12 to 14. As you can see, uh, we have develop uh, 14 to 16 and apply is 16 to 18. We also um, offer a collegiate based level team, which is 19 plus. And then this year come um, this all we started our accelerated program, which there's been a, uh, I'm sure that we'll be receiving at the end of uh, this presentation, a lot of questions about the accelerated route. So if you can see uh, from your, your, your screen, there's a 14 to six develop, apply and excel. And um, those are basically our scout teams and um, they, they were, require uh, you know a lot of commitment from from yourself as parents um, there's a lot of time in that accelerated route I don't want to spend too much time on the that accelerated route um, 
but uh, we'd also like, I'd also like to talk to you about some of the things that we've done for, uh, behind the scene. Um, we've, we've worked really hard on our coaching handbook, which our coaches will receive um, in 2021. Uh, and um, that deals with everything that the coach would need for that, um, for that year. Okay, we'll have the practice plans, um, the coaches, um, coaches expectate the coach would need in that uh, handbook. Um, as far as uh, what else we're doing here, and that's primary my, my, my primary role here at Steel is a coach developer. So being the coach developer, um, that's part of their professional development here at Steel. So what we'll do is um, I'll go out and watch a game. Um, I'll, I'll write a report. That report is uh, based on five to six questions. Um, some of the questions um, that I'll be evaluating them on is, um, you know, do they provide a, a positive environment? Was their pre-game uh, um, coach to player relationship? Uh, are they using age appropriate language? Are they communicating? How was their game strategy? And then we will um, bring it to myself and the coach. The coach will also um, fill out a, a coach reflection form. Um, and then we will meet within 48 hours. Um, so I think that's the huge huge thing for the growth of the, the coaches here at Steel. Um, I know, you know, at times, uh, you know, people want to play for a certain coach, but we're only going to be as strong as all of our coaches here. Um, so if we have 20 coaches, we want to make sure that you uh, receive a top-notch coach um, that is, has been groomed and um, is, is learning uh, we want to make sure that we, ha I look up here at the growth mindset, right? So uh, we want to make sure that all of our coaches have that growth uh, mindset. Um, and then also we want to uh, make sure that the coaches here are doing what they should be doing on and off the field. Uh, my next topic that I'll talk about is uh, the CEUs and the ongoing um, uh, work that the coaches put put in behind the scenes. I mentioned earlier that they're required this year to do uh, 15 CEUs, which are continuing. I mentioned we have a catalog that they can choose from. They can uh, choose from podcasts. Uh, they can they can uh, read books. Uh, each hour that they've spent is the credit of. Uh, uh, for their CEUs, live workshop that we've done in the cafeteria about how to hold runners. Um, so the net, you know, we're, we're figuring out our next workshop. They'll be required to do three workshops and do, do online modules. Um, let me see what else. Um, so really what we wanted to do was or at least what I, you know, wanted to do. Besides talking about the coach curriculum, the practice plans, uh, the handbook that we're developing, and our long-term athletic um, development plan, is really thank our coaches and um, thank them for what they've done. Right. So um, it's really special to be a coach. I've been in. Um, I've been in the game a long time. I've uh, played 10 years in the big leagues. Uh, I'm a college coach. I've been in youth travel uh, for the last 16 years. Um, so I'm really fortunate that I'm able to, um, you know, to be in this position and to help young coaches. So, um, you know, I really get a sense of uh, satisfaction of uh, really helping out the coaches. So. Uh, what we wanted you to understand also is that we do, we have a plan for your child, you know, starting at um, seven, 
uh, to 19 and hopefully they enjoy, you know, just, uh, a, you know, that love of the game that uh, we're trying to show them. Um, I think I'm all set and I think I'm going to pass it to Steve Jones. Hi guys. So um, just to briefly introduce myself, I'm Steve Jones and I'm uh, in charge of the Steel Sports Coaching System and a lot of what's been said already, already this evening it refers to the role I try and play within the company. I do want to say it's uh, quite a privilege to be uh, introduced by Keith Ozick. I, I just think he's an outstanding individual as a person, but as a coach, I've seen him work and you're just very lucky if you've got your kids involved with him or any one of these young people that are on this call who do a tremendous job throughout their time with your children and your young adults that live with you um, to try and develop them in the way that we've committed to doing so. So my role within the company is more to do with everything that we feel a coach needs to do to nurture those athletes that we have, whether they're softball players, baseball players, or soccer players, it's exactly the same. And our mission states clearly what that is. And our mission at Steel Sports is in, to inspire youth to reach their potential on and off the field by developing them as athletes and people through the Steel Sports coaching system. I'll tell you right now, that doesn't mean a damn thing unless we follow it up and we educate our coaches about how they can do that with your children. We're not saying we're the only people who develop them as, uh, as people. You parents do a fabulous job at home, but sports gives us the opportunities at times to highlight life lessons that they can understand on the field, but then what we want them to do, if we're achieving our mission, we want them to take those life skills and put them into effect in their schools, in their communities, in their homes, and later in life in the workplace. So we are really committed to having them fulfill their potential on and off the field. Athletes and people equally is our focus as coaches at Steel Sports. And then we have a vision and our vision is very modest. We wanna impact the entire world. We wanna impact first and foremost, the youth coaching system. How other companies, not just us, how they coach people, how they treat people, and how they affect the young people on and off the field. We want to impact how everybody does that. We want them to look at us, look at us as the gold standard and change some of their practices accordingly. And then the next bold statement we make is that we want to create the future leaders, the next generation of leaders. And that's again, just words, except we've developed a system, a leadership, leaders of character program that all of our athletes at Baseball 11, all of our high school athletes will go through beginning this spring. We've already started that program this fall with the soccer players. And that's a program that was designed by a gentleman called Dr. Peter Mindell, who's a pretty impressive person. Obviously, he's a doctor of psychology. He also happens to be in charge of the character and leadership development for one particular institute. And that institute is West Point Academy. So he is literally in charge of making sure the future leaders of the military in this country have well-established good character and leadership skills. And we've partnered with that individual to build a program that means we don't just talk about this in our vision, we actually carry it out. And your children and your young adults will be going through this program with their coaches beginning in the spring, and they'll be assessing their strengths and weaknesses on and off the field and seeing how they can work on those things. And then it comes down to four key words for us. So on the next slide, you're gonna see, we have what we call our core values. And those core values, basically, we use the anagram of trick. So trick to us means teamwork, respect, integrity, and commitment. And I travel the country and I watch our athletes in Texas, Washington, California, Massachusetts, New York, I've been out to baseball heaven a few times and I've really enjoyed my time there. And I'll pull kids out of their practice and I'll say to them, hey, which one of our four core values do you like? And what does that mean to you? And when I was out at baseball heaven, I was thrilled to say the 12 kids I pulled out all had an answer for me. They all knew those words, which means the coaches are doing the right thing in making sure they understand that these are important to us. So teamwork, respect, integrity, and commitment are what we demand of our players. We also demand those of our coaches. So when you're watching a steel coach and you feel that these are not being represented either at practice or a game, we want to hear from you. We want to hear if there's an issue and we will address it. 
We expect our athletes to exhibit these four core values and they will only do that if their coaches do the same thing. And here's the message I have for you because I don't often get to speak to so many of the parents in one space. These four words apply to you as well. So when you're watching your kids play, if you're criticizing someone that's playing with him or someone that's playing against him, you're not demonstrating teamwork. If you're rooting for a kid to fail so that your kid can succeed, that's not demonstrating teamwork. If you get frustrated with the umpires, which we all do, and you start belittling the umpire, shouting at the umpire, that's not demonstrating respect. If you don't allow your kids to make the decision in the field like our coaches do, that's not integrity. Because I would challenge you all, if you were watching your kid in a school play and he fluffed his lines or she fluffed her lines, would you stand up in the audience and correct your kid? So the integrity you show by sitting in the audience, we wanna see when you're sitting watching your kids play. Let the kids make the decisions and our coaches will review their decisions with them. And then finally, there's the commitment. Your, sh your kids show commitment every time they come to practice. These guys on this call tonight are showing commitment to your kids. Here's the commitment you need to have to your athletes. After you watch them play a game, say five words. I love watching you play. Five words. I love watching you play. And for those of you sitting there now saying, oh, I've seen my kids play plenty of times when I didn't want to say that. I have the same experience. I have three daughters who all played sports. And there were times at the end of the game, I couldn't say that. So you know what I did? I shut up and I didn't say anything. And I didn't put them through an interrogation on the car ride home from baseball heaven or from the tournament we played in. I waited, I waited, and they eventually would say to me, my daughters and your kids will do the same. I was lousy today, or I didn't do well today. And when you let them initiate that conversation and you commit to them initiating the conversation, that conversation will be so much more fruitful. So I don't want to take up any more of the time because there's some great presenters left, but I do want to say this. If you're in our organization, you as a parent should know what our mission is. You should know what our vision is and you should know these four core values that apply to you as much as the coaches and the athletes. And if you have kids in other sports organizations, ask them, what is your mission? What is your vision? And what are your core values? Because if they don't have any, I suspect that they're not serving your kid to the best. So once again, I uh, thank you for your time. And I have the privilege and honor of handing this over to last year's Steel Sports Coach of the Year. He still blushes when we mention it. But uh, I'm very happy I've seen this guy coach as well. And he's a brilliant young coach and a great young man. So uh, I'm handing over to Nick Atardi. Thank you, Jonesy. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Hello, everyone. My name is Nick Atardi. Um, like you said, I guess I was the 2019 Coach of the Year. Uh, I'm also the Community Program Director of Steel Sports and Baseball Heaven. Just a fancy word of saying I'm in charge of the indoor activities, lessons, camps, and cl uh, clinics. I also coach three Team Steel teams as well. Uh, just briefly today, I'm just going to go over all the camps and clinics we have to offer in 2020 and 2021. Um, so just a quick background. Our Steel Sports Academy have a wide variety of skill development programs, camps, clinics, and showcases for the upcoming season. Our coaching staff is filled with former college players, professional players, coaching, college coaches, and high school coaches as well. All coaches and instructors go through training uh, to provide the best development on and off the field for our players. Each uh, camp and clinic offer a Team Steel discount. And I guess I will now go over all the camps. Um, next slide. So we have, I've broken down our camps into skill development programs and camps, and then just our week long camps and our day camps, and then our lessons as well. Um, so our skill development camps include our hitting clinic series and our catching clinic, uh, clinic series, which is ran by coach Keith Osick. We have our infield clinic series ran by coach Mike McCabe. Our arm conditioning series ran by coach Cameron Sorgi. Our steel baseball boot camp ran by Sean McMurray and myself and our youth pitching clinic ran by Cameron Sorgi and Sean McMurray. Now, if we move over to our uh, day and week long camps, we have our summer camp series, which is an eight week series in the middle of summer. Um, we now partnered with the Ducks, so there would be a few duck, duck days where we go to Duck Stadium. 
We also have our winter recess camp, our spring break camp, um, Black Friday all youth sports camp, Martha Luther King camp, and our speed and agility classes and training. The atmosphere around these camps are fun and enjoyable for the kids and the coaches. Starting November 3rd, if you look at the bottom of the slide, there will be a hit league. It's a steel baseball hit league, which will be featured using our technology of a wrap soda machine. Um, the hit league will be div divided up in between middle school and high school divisions. And uh, a prize will be given to each winning team. The last thing I would like to bring up is our lessons. So each lesson could be one-on-one -on -one or a group lesson rate, which is uh, with our vi wide variety of instructors to choose from. We have Keith Dosick and Frank Kalanata, who are former professional baseball players. And we also have seven senior instructors as well. Each lesson could be individual or a six pack. All our camps and clinics offer a team steel discount for our players and any questions about them could be emailed to us at info at steelsportsacademy.com. And then just on a side note, in our indoor facility, we've been very strict about our mass, social distancing, and following up our COVID rules. Um, just to break it down, we've been hitting in every other cage and we shut down the cages in between. Um, same thing with the pitching mounds. We're trying to space out the teams as much as possible. Uh, we disinfect the turf and our equipment every day and every night. And we're trying to keep the facility safe to make sure the boys and girls keep on playing. Uh, thank you and we hope to see you around. Now we're gonna go back to Frank with any questions. Thanks, Nick. Can everybody hear me, I hope? Uh, two of them I think I can answer on my own, so here we go. If I left for the fall season but want to return for, for 2021, am I considered new or returning? You would be, you would be considered a new, a new tryout. So you would come to the new tryouts uh, for your respected age group. If we played in the fall for the first time, are we considered new or returning? You are considered part of our steel family. You played in the fall. You will never leave. You are still here. You could come to the steel tryout if your team has a tryout or if it's staying together. Uh, but no, you are considered part of the steel family with the biggest backyard in the world. The next question is for Steve Jones. Steve, I'm going to turn your mic on for you and uh, let you answer this one. If I could find you. I got the hardest job of the night. I think I'm good now, Frank. Here's the question to you, Steve. I understand the steel sports approach, but what about winning games? Is that part of the steel sports coaching system? It's actually a really cool and topical question right now, and uh, I think you'll see why in my answer. Yes, we are fiercely competitive, and I use the word fiercely deliberately. Every time any one of our athletes or any one of our coaches steps on a field, we want to win. We absolutely want to win. That is not so important with our younger teams. And when we get to the older level where it matters to the athletes more than the parents, we're very much vested in trying to win every single game. But, and we've got a great example in this sport, right, baseball? Last year, there's a team that won a world title. Did they win it the right, right way? I think most people would probably agree not. And steel sports is really conflicted because the current coach of that team is on our uh, advisory board, Dusty Baker. Met the guy several times. He's one of the most honorable gentlemen I've ever met. But I think if you ask Dusty Baker, he'd tell, tell you this. You can win, but winning the right way is much more important. So we want to win every game we play, but we want our kids to win the right way so they learn the right lessons for success. And that, that is that there's no shortcuts. So the short answer to the question, yes, fiercely competitive, and we want to win, but we want to win the right way. Great, thanks. I have one more for you, Steve. And I think we could, I should uh, give this question to you. Steve actually is our COVID officer. And the question here is, is there a plan for winter workouts in this COVID era? So I guess we'll, we will tell them that you know, what you do at the health department, what you, what you monitor daily, weekly, uh, you know, each day something changes. So maybe you could give a little answer to that question. Yeah, so Frank, you've just hit the nail on the head. Yesterday in New Jersey, as an example, the governor announced that we can have winter practices. You can have 25 people plus a coach in an indoor space to conduct a practice. You can actually even play basketball games indoors. Uh, just no crowds allowed, but you can exceed the number. Um, 
the, the caveat right now in New Jersey is 25% of the maximum capacity of the facility. So we currently do have a return to play for COVID outdoors. And we are working on a return to play for COVID indoors, but we are not going to publish it deliberately before December, mid-December, because every week something changes. So I shouldn't say mid-December, it'll be beginning of December that we'll start to publish what those guidelines are, making sure that we have a policy as steel, but that it also takes into account every region, every area, and every state that we deal with. So yes, the plans will be in place. Thank you, Steve. Our next question, and I believe I can answer this one again. So if a player is hurt and can't try out for the scout team, will there be another opportunity for that player to try out for the team? You are part of the Steel family. You will have every opportunity to try out for that team when you are cleared by your doctor to play. So if you're gonna miss the tryout, we will make sure that your child will get a tryout for the scout team when that player is healthy. Okay, what's next? How do you sign up for clinics? I think I can answer that one too, Nick. Uh, they're on our Steel Sports Academy website, which will most likely be changed into a Steel Sports website. Uh, you could find all of our camps and clinics on the steelsportsacademy.com website, and all of, those, all of those registrations go through league apps. So all of you on this call apparently have an account with league apps, so you just register right through league apps. And the next question I have is for Cameron. Will steel, will steel players on the grad teams get more of a get chance, of a chance to, play to play at Baseball, baseball Heaven in 2021? Uh, yes. Um, are you are we referring to tournaments or to practice? Tournaments. Yeah. So tournaments. Um, with the schedule now uh, with, the, with the new grad year teams, uh, obviously we are going to be focusing on doing a lot of perfect game events. Um, those perfect game events, we are lucky enough to host a, a bunch of them here. Um, so when, when the tournaments are here, we will be playing them. Um, and we are also working on putting an event together, um, you know, a college centric event uh, here at Baseball Heaven in late August of next year, which we are really excited about. Thank you, Cameron. The next question is for Anthony. Who will notify the team if there needs to be a tryout for a team steel team? A returning, and when? You're saying it. Returning player. So, um, Myself and Cameron Sorgi, the product directors, will go over that and assess uh, each team along with the coach. Um, and then we will notify the coach to let the parents know if they will have to uh, go to tryouts. And that will be done as soon as Friday. So if you, you will know by Friday if, um, if your current team or if you, ha you yourself have to go to a tryout for, for the Team Steel um, returning players. And I just saw another one on there. Um, we are new to Team Steel this fall. Is there a fee for tryouts? And when will the tuition information for the 2021 20, season be available? If it is already available, where is it published? Um, there is no fee for tryouts. And um, the day of your tryout, you will have that information of what each team will cost. So, and those are currently being uh, constructed as we speak and tomorrow as well. And I just, I saw another one too. If Cooperstown is open, how many teams might you be sending? So if Cooperstown is open, we currently have, right now we have two teams moving up from 11U, going to 12U. Both of those teams will be going to Cooperstown. If we happen to um, get another 12U team or two more 12U teams, however many that we have, they will all be going to Cooperstown. So, and we usually go that last week of August. We and like all the questions, this is great. One thing I'd say for, if we have any 12U players here that miss Cooperstown, the 13U teams next year, and a lot of them are staying together, are, uh, we really should bring this up at the tryouts, but their fundraising can go to Branson, Missouri, to Myrtle Beach, because they missed out of Cooperstown. So that's something to keep in mind with your teams, that that's, that's a separate fee that they'll fundraise for, but since they missed out on Cooperstown, they're really looking to do that. Week long, long travel, travel to be to Missouri, uh, Ripken and Myrtle Grant Beach, to Missouri, Florida, uh, Ripken and Myrtle so Beach, perfect game in Florida, whatever. So just keep okay, that in mind. Questions for Cameron. We're gonna do okay, two more questions, questions for Cameron. Gonna We're going to do two more questions, and that's going to be what time? I got one to answer to. Okay, we'll do a couple more questions. This one's for Cameron. Okay, we'll do a couple more questions. This one's for Cameron. If a player does not make scout team. 
Is there, there any other option, option to be seen for colleges like Diamond Nation, et cetera? Colleges like Diamond Nation, et cetera. That mean they will not they don't make it to that team. Does college. that mean they will not be likely able to play for college? Yeah, that That's is a great, great question. Great question. Um, I would first preface it by saying that as, as long as you're part of the Steel family, um, I'll do everything in my power, and I know the rest of the staff here uh, will do everything that we can uh, to make sure that your child is able to play baseball for um, as long as they can. Um, all of our teams, you know, they are, I would say, high school age teams uh, will still travel, um, you know, do their uh, domination events or uh, whatever event it may be. Um, and if you're, you know, if your son uh, or child is, you know, dead set on playing in college, um, just contact me. Uh, you're part of the Steel family, and I'll do everything I can to help you. Another question I saw too is, are the teams staying under the age groups of 10U, 11U, et cetera, or are they moving towards graduation year? So the teams will only be moving towards graduation year. So as an example, this year we have 2022, 2023, and 2024. So after next summer, this, at ne uh, the start of next fall, we will roll in our 2025 grad year team. So that following summer of 2022, we'll have our 2023, our 2024s, and our 2025. So every year one gets eliminated and that next year up kind of works its way in. But all as far as any anything from 10U to, to um, I would say 14U is, is when um, we're still gonna have those numbers next to our names and it won't be a, um, a graduate year team until they're old enough to, to go to these events that offer these grad year tournaments and, and are actually worth it for the kids. I also think to make that clear, we will we still will have 15U, 16U, and 17U teams, and they won't be played as grad teams, uh, but they do have played as grad teams, uh, and Coach Bobby, and they do a lot of recruiting for those teams too, uh, because the cost is a little less than the grad year team. So we will have teams all the way up to 18U, us, the grad year team. That question's for Anthony. The question is, does that mean teams will be reorganized? Um, so that's something we kind of evaluate internally with, um, with our staff. Um, and we will kind of start going over too with the evaluation committee we, um, we created. Um, but as well as the coach of, of as, you know, whatever team that may be. Um, we will sit together with that coach and, and go over things and, and see if the team is, is feasible for the future or if that team needs to be, um, you know, shuffled around. And, and we've had instances in the past where we had to move, move some kids around and, and uh, kind of revamp a team to make things work and, um, you know, do what's best for the team and, and to ha make them have a, you know, a good season and, and develop the right way. Um, I hope that answers that question. Yeah, let's well, – we can just make one thing clear that teams that want to stay together, because we are a family, are staying together. You know, we have a lot of teams that want to stay together up to 13 years, 14 years. So why break up the family? Make the scout team so be it. But we do have a lot of teams that want to stay together, especially up to Cooperstown. I'm talking with my hands, but – Especially up to Cooperstown, but uh, at the 13 U, 14 U level, the majority of those teams always stay together. The coach might change, but the kids stay together. Uh, that's it for our questions. We did not have any more coming in. We what we had over 130 people on this call at one point, which I think is great for a playoff at a baseball dinner time at 6:30, and people that have games are at the field listening on our phone. Uh, we really, really want to thank you all for coming. We want to thank the staff that has uh, presented tonight. Steve, Cameron, Anthony, Nate, uh, Keith, uh, and Keith, they did. and Nathan uh, for helping with everything they did. I think it was a successful great uh, night. You'll get a lot more information. And you'll get a lot more information during our tryouts on the 23rd. 23rd. We, have we have our parent meeting. Before, Before they can take, take the field. field. So, so our, our parent meeting will be under the tent in the, in the cafe. The cafe. Okay. Uh, thank you. Have a great night. Okay. Everybody stay safe and we'll see you on the field. Thank you.